At long last, in 1787, Emperor Joseph did find a position for Mozart. He appointed him to the post of court composer with a fairly good salary. There were great rejoicings in the modest apartment of the young couple. Constanza was a loving and faithful wife, always gay and carefree, even when money became scarce. But as a homemaker, she did not have much experience. Even at the height of his fame, Mozart struggled to maintain the household and often had to borrow money from wealthy friends. He taught, performed, and composed with restless zeal as though he had a foreboding that his lifespan would be a short one. One magnificent opera after another was created during this time. First, the abduction from the Seraglio, commissioned by Emperor Joseph, Cosi Fantuti, and the immortal masterpiece, The Marriage of Figaro. Today, it is hard to understand that the Viennese audiences, by and large, received this charming gay opera with little enthusiasm. However, Figaro earned Mozart a rousing ovation. Mozart composed his next opera, Don Giovanni, for Prague. Here he accomplished again one of his miracles. On the evening before the premiere, the overture had not yet been written. Constanza was greatly alarmed, but Mozart reassured her, don't let it worry you, dear wife, it will be ready in time. He had attended the rehearsals all day and he was completely exhausted. Constanza had to read to him while his pen glided over the paper with incredible speed. From time to time, the exhausted composer fell asleep for a few moments, but when morning came, the magnificent overture to Don Giovanni was written. Up to this time, Mozart had composed his operas in the Italian style, which was then generally preferred by the public. One day, his friend Schikaneder, who was a singer, author, and theater manager, showed him a script for a fairy opera. 
Why don't you try composing a German opera for once, he said, so that everyone can understand the text, not only the emperor and his noblemen. I shall have it performed at my theater. Thus, the magic flute was written, one of Mozart's noblest creations, the symbol of Freemasonry, of which he was a member. Between these enormous tasks, Mozart composed countless other works, the three symphonies that rank as his greatest, in E flat, in G minor, and the Jupiter in C major. chamber music poured out of his pen with wonderful facility. Some of his string quartets were dedicated to Joseph Haydn, who, a famous master himself, had boundless admiration for Mozart. He is the greatest composer I know, he used to say. of 1791, a mysterious stranger, clad in black, appeared in Mozart's house. He did not introduce himself, but in short words, gave the order to write a requiem mass for him. The fee would be 100 ducats. Mozart, who found it increasingly difficult to provide for his growing family, two sons had been born, went to work eagerly, but an anxious feeling took hold of him. Had he not been sickly and weak just recently? Was it an evil omen? It seems to me that I am writing the requiem for myself, he said to his wife. Constanza wept bitter tears and tried to dispel his fear. amateur had commissioned the requiem which he would then declare his own work. Mozart's health, always delicate, was now greatly impaired. With his last strength he worked on the requiem. He did not live long enough. The mass remained a fragment, later to be finished by his pupil Sussmeyer. On December 5th, 1791, Mozart, at the age of 35, closed his eyes forever.
So little money was in the house that only the most simple funeral in a mass grave could be paid for. Constanza, sick with grief, did not attend. Just a small group of friends walked behind the coffin. Today, nobody knows in which part of the Viennese cemetery Mozart's remains were laid to rest. Later on, great monuments have been erected in memory of Mozart. But the most beautiful one, he created himself in the hearts of all the people who cherish his music. <laughs>